I'll say that again. Hey, welcome everybody to our Friday at Five session. I'm Karen Taylor, co-author of The Color Vowel Chart. Uh, we have lots of people joining the room and we're just really thrilled to have you here today uh, for our session on Blue Canoe's new launch. Uh, we're taking a moment to find the chat as part of our housekeeping, um, meaning understanding the tools that we're using to communicate right here and right now uh, we can never underestimate the need for doing that in any Zoom session or any other video session that you run um, because you never know when just one participant's new to all of these tools. So great to see people. I have someone here from Ecuador. That's great, Lorena. Uh, we've got Michigan represented and Tokyo, Japan and Oklahoma. I mean, that's the kind of diversity that we have in our community. I see Doug is here. Um, welcome. Good. And so also just know that in the chat, we'll be using this to ask questions along the way. And uh, if it's something that I should address for everybody at some length, then Penny will uh, let me know and you know, you'll know you unmute yourself or Sarah, you can dive in. I'll be introducing both of you again, just a moment, okay? We get together every Friday. We've been doing this for about two months now and it's sort of our way of responding to this new era where we stay at home and teach from home and suddenly are having to take on all kinds of new uh, technology tools, the ability to get things done and communicate well with our students. Uh, so we've had past features and all of these are recorded and posted in our YouTube channel called Fridays at Five. And I think maybe Jennifer, could you grab a link to that playlist and share that with everybody? Okay. Um, if you're interested in the color vowel chart, we'll be sharing links for our upcoming events. Uh, so you may have found us through Facebook, but we actually do uh, quite a bit each month and we'd love to see you at another event too. Great. All right. Well, I'd like to start by first uh, just saying welcome and to introduce some of our, our key guests today because what we're talking about today is the result of a years long collaboration uh, working together on something that has never been done before. And so it's, it's really very, it's very exciting what we're able to show you today and uh, where we've come in the past four years of working together. Um, prior to four years ago, I, as I have been for over 20 years, I'm a language teacher and I had created a, a way of talking about spoken English that people found compelling. And so the color vowel chart sort of created this journey for me and my colleagues, my co-author. And then about four years ago, I met Sarah Daniels, who's right here in the room. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> and if you are not looking at everybody in gallery mode, by the way, go ahead and go up to the right corner of your screen and you'll see the gallery view option. It looks like a waffle or a dial pad. And so you can see everybody at the same time. Um, and that way you're not just looking at the person who's speaking. So hello, Sarah, wave your hands around. Sarah's hi. The oh, hi. <laughs> You want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. I'm Sarah Daniels, and I'm a CEO and a co-founder of Blue Canoe, and so privileged to have been partnered with Karen over the last four years. And uh, we're on a great journey to help the world with the color vowel methodology and the technology that we've had, and I'm just so grateful to be able to be part of it. Yeah, thank you. So Sarah's here, she'll be able to answer questions as will Penny Williams, and I want you to know her face and her name. Uh, Penny is sort of the, uh, the every, everybody communicator at Blue Canoe, and will be helping all of you and any of you with uh, questions and steps forward in gaining access to Blue Canoe. Wonderful. I would like to ask in the chat, just so uh, my colleagues and I get a, chan a chance to see, if you already have Blue Canoe and you've been using it, um, hold back on this question. If you're new, just type new, and that way we'll know how many of you are new to Blue Canoe and excited to see it, okay? Great, well, um, let me start by saying, um, so four years ago, I met Sarah, and Sarah and I have been working along with our colleagues together as two teams, two companies coming together and collaborating, and we, we sort of refer to each other as partners, sister companies, um, all kinds of ways. The point is that pretty much 24 seven, we are in touch with each other uh, to do something new. And that is to bring teaching methodology and what we human teachers do in our classrooms effectively and create mm, a complement to that, a mobile complement that allows learners to leave your classroom 
and continue their work with that same effective brain-based method of teaching spoken English. And so that method is the color vowel approach. Uh, it is a brain-based method that I'll, I'll very briefly touch on today and introduce you to. Um, but what's exciting about this is we're able to take that and combine it with voice recognition technology and what we call machine learning, which is also called artificial intelligence or AI, uh, but this notion of training software to know how to respond to input, in this case to learners' speech in English, so that we can detect the most important kinds of errors and give prioritized feedback on those errors. Uh, so that's really different from a lot of what's out there, and we can save that part of the conversation for a little later after we get to know what Blue Canoe is, okay? Um, I'm just taking a look because I'm excited to see how many new people we have. It's fabulous. Um, great. Well, let me take a moment to talk just a little bit with one slide about the brain and why it is that we need to care about the brain. When it comes to language learning, and particularly to pronunciation, uh, there's a part of the brain that here we represent with a red circle called Broca's area. Um, and if you want to find it, just to orient yourself to this drawing, uh, Broca's area is toward just in front of your ear on the left side. So go ahead and take your hand and kind of find Broca's area um, so that you can imagine now that the nose and the eyes, we're looking down on top of the brain from above. The nose and eyes are here and this is the back of your head, and here is Broca's area. And that part of your brain um, is designed and wired for your first language or first languages as you were exposed to them from pre-infancy, even in the womb, all the way through sometime in adolescence. And you may have studied that. Uh, it's called the critical period hypothesis. Uh, and so if you heard of that in the research, a lot of it was uh, debunked when it came to grammar learning or syntax, but when it comes to pronunciation, it remains uh, a well-held theory with lots of data supporting it. Um, what that means for us practically is that we can't just model speech and successfully have a learner mimic it back and then have it be learned. Uh, it simply doesn't work that way, and we know that, right? We've seen ourselves say a phrase and, and then it comes back to us in a different form and we don't know why, and the learner doesn't know why either. Um, there's something in the way, right? And so what we're doing with Blue Canoe and Color Vowel is we're engaging these other parts of the brain. The kinesthetic part of the brain, which actually is bilateral, where we are going to use the open hand, that's one of our key techniques in the Color Vowel approach. Uh, we, will, we will activate the musical part of the brain, not by singing. So if you're not musical, don't worry. I mean, people like Doug and I were like, woohoo, take out our guitars and start singing. But that's not this kind of musical learning. Um, this musical learning has to do with uh, noticing the priority of, of the pitch and what we call the prosody. So we're going to highlight with our hand what we're doing with our voice. It creates a sense of rhythm that you can start to hear like this. Um, so if you started to hear ba 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 that's the rhythm that we can highlight and make you suddenly very aware of by use of the kinesthetic channels as well, okay? And then all the while we're activating uh, the visual cortex of the brain through the colors of the color vowel chart, the organization of the chart itself as a, as a mental organizer for sound, and then the images that we use to cue specific vowel sounds, uh, specifically the, the peak or the stressed vowel sounds and not every vowel letter that occurs in a word, okay? When you get started with Blue Canoe, and that's kind of, I forced myself not to go any more into color vowel or language per se, but I want to get into Blue Canoe because that's our goal today. Um, when you get started with Blue Canoe, you create an account. And so I'm actually going to stop for a minute right here and just say, you now can go or you can tell your friends to go to an app store or the Play Store. And today, as of yesterday, in fact, you can create your own account. Um, now, when I say you, I'm really talking to those of you who are brand new uh, as a way to just know how it's going to feel to anyone who downloads the app for the first time. Um, or if you already have Blue Canoe, this is for you to tell your students and their families and their friends. So now everybody can access Blue Canoe. 
um, and not just through us, through a school or through their teacher. And until, until yesterday, that's been the only way to access Blue Canoe uh, because we've been working with schools closely and that was part of our model. With the advent of the coronavirus era, things really have shifted for all of us. I think we can say that safely. And, and that includes Blue Canoe itself and the way that we start thinking about reaching people. We, we realized we wanted to reach individuals more easily. Um, and so many individuals don't have a teacher or a school or an employer who's going to provide them with that access. And so that's why we've quickly worked with our team to make Blue Canoe accessible um, at a free level immediately and then with options for that individual to upgrade to the full version with all of the bells and whistles. Um, but our free version has quite a few bells and whistles and that's where I'd like to start with you. Um, so I'll take any questions that are coming up right now before we dive right into what it looks like and I'll start sharing screens. But Penny, is there anything there that we can address or that you can throw my way while I do this? Um, we're really, really excited. We, we want to, um, there are, especially those of you who are very familiar with us, there's, we want to make a clear delineation. And so uh, we're, we're going to be coming out with an FAQ and uh, I think that'll be really helpful. We'll be having the individual uh, part of Blue Canoe and then the group part. You all fall in that group part. So when that, when you are coming to us and directly to us versus um, going into the the um, app store now and just downloading it and accessing it yourself. When you come through us, you can stay together as a unit, as a group with your learners. You'll have access to the dashboard and, um, and then you can fully help and support them. Um, if they come in through just downloading, you don't have that connection. So we wanna make that really clear. Uh, wanna make sure everyone comes out of this knowing that difference. So, and there are uh, times when it's appropriate, when they're no longer in class with you. So we are uh, very, very supportive while they're your learners. And then when they, they continue, on, continue out of your class, if they'd like to keep using Blue Canoe, then, um, then they would go to the individual section. So we wanna make that delineation clear, I think, Karen, most coming out of this, is that right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so just remember that I'll be talking, when I say you, we'll, we'll have to pay close attention to which you were talking about. Um, there's the you who's the teacher right here and now, and then there's the you who's going to imagine yourself in the shoes of, of a learner you know or a family member of theirs who you don't know but have heard that they, they would like Blue Canoe um, or maybe you think they would like it. So, um, and by the way, I wanna thank Saeed. He already jumped in and uh, went into lesson one and is already really excited. So we're glad to see that over there in the chat. Um, let me go ahead and share screen here. I'm, I'm going to use two phones so you can really see a clear comparison of the two versions. And let me just see if I can darken my screen a little for you to make it a little bit better. Get this. There we go. All right, so right now, um, we're just gonna focus on what, what a learner sees from the outside, someone who doesn't have a teacher like you to uh, gain full access to either the educator uh, option that's out there right now with you or the full version. Um, when we go into Blue Canoe, actually the first thing they see is this set of introductory lessons. And let me just get my camera to focus there. There we go. So these are introductory lessons that pop up first and are in a sense required before you can start playing a game because the methodology means that you've got to have the basics of what it is that we're trying to teach you um, and what it is that we prioritize. Um, so we start with stress, of course, as you see here. And um, I won't go a great deal through the lesson because you'll want to go through that yourself. If you already have the full app, by the way, you can, um, you can go ahead and sign out through your profile. And then when you sign back in, sign up with a new email address. Some other, I'm sure many of us have multiple email addresses. And when you sign up with a new email address, and register yourself, you're going to be walked through as a brand new user. So that, that would just be the trick. And if anybody needs extra help, you can kind of um, go over in the chat and ask about that, okay? Um, but once you get in, you see this lesson. And as you can see, there's a certain amount of, of quiet reading. Um, we save the, the voice activated and listening parts for the actual part of the lesson. Um, so we start in with stress that you know, it's important. Um, 
And then we started with basically a lesson that if somebody has never come across this method before, they're quickly introduced to the concept of an important syllable, that English has rhythm. Okay, so every word of English has one stressed syllable. We can listen. Spoken, English, stress. Okay. And then we start immediately getting exposed to this idea that there is one syllable that needs to have more time and more prominence than another. So you can hear the difference between develop and develop. Okay, which, you know, raise your hand if those, those sound really distinct. And of course, the first one's right, right? But for learners, uh, for some learners, those two will sound pretty much the same as if I were to look at two shades, uh, two kinds of green colors that I'd say are both green. Or if I look at two apples and I say, well, they're both apples, meaning I haven't noticed yet those, dis those really important fine differences between the two. So we're just starting to bridge this idea that the stress location is really important in English. We then walk them right through a lesson. Where's the stress? And I apologize, my camera seems to be very excited today. Um, I'm not gonna try to fuss with it, but um, here's a question of where's the stress? They listen. Teachers. And they decide which, which image matches more closely that idea of what they hear. Teachers. And if they answer here, they're simply, so we'll walk through a lesson in that fashion so that you can see uh, what the, the whole story is about. And once you go through these two main lessons as a brand new user, you then are brought here, okay? Notice that there's a mention of your free activities. So this version has a small number of fully featured activities. Uh, the free version has the voice recognition, the machine learning, all of the technology that we've worked so hard on for four years is right there and alive and well, okay? So we don't skimp on those features in the free version. It's simply the amount of content that is different. Um, free users get a video lesson. They receive a Color It Out, and this version of Color It Out has the top 200 words, as you can see here, the base words. And then they can sort of get a glimpse of what else they would receive if they uh, try the free full version for seven days. So this is an offer to sign up for the full version, seven day trial. And during that time, you can decide to opt out and not continue with a full version that would be paid. Okay. Uh, the other sets of words include daily life, technology, et cetera. And we have some pretty specialized vocabularies in there that are pretty exciting. Okay. That's a little bit about Color It Out. Color It Out, by the way, is based on our physical card game that we highlighted last week. So if you're new today, and this is a new idea to you. Um, there is a whole session on last week's Color It Out, our card game. And this was the sort of the impetus for the creation of, of Blue Canoe and the Color It Out game that is sitting right now in, your, in the phone, okay? All right, so we have video lesson, Color It Out, and then there's one lesson. And this lesson is the social lesson, okay? Um, when you go into a lesson, there there's a lot hidden in there that we try to create in a very simple visual field um, so that it invites exploration. And so, for example, um, here you can listen to the phrase. Congratulations on your new job. Okay. You can listen to each of the key words. And the key words are identified with a bold letter and an underline. So these are the two key sounds of the two key words. Gray day congratulations. Olive sock job. You could take just those two words and hear them over and over. Gray day congratulations. Olive sock job. And you can start to use your hand, which we then teach you about in the video. So try this with your hand now. Gray day congratulations. Olive sock job. Job. We can start to hear congratulations and job. Okay. And then it's time to record down at the bottom. Uh, when I press record, you have to be in a reasonably quiet room. Um, we've done a pretty good job of sort of deciding how much noise and figuring out how much noise can be tolerated by the machine learning. Um, so it's pretty quiet in here. Let me give it a try. Congratulations on your new job. And I get a little instruction there. Congratulations on your new job. Okay. 
So I may be, I'm on kind of a banger phone. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the other phone so you can see what this looks like when I play on a version that I know works. Um, I kind of stole my husband's phone for a minute that doesn't have a SIM card, so that might be what's going on. So here is today's plan. This is the full version, just so you know, I've switched over, but the functionality is the same. So if I go into a lesson, for example, industry, um, here's another sentence. I know this can be confusing. I know this can be confusing. I know this can be confusing. I know this can be confusing, but let's give it a try, right? A nice little chant there, by the way, for teachers to use in class. Rose boat, no. Blue moon, confusing. Let's try no confusing. No confusing. And now let's try the whole sentence with it. I know this can be confusing. I know this can be confusing. So the learner can listen, repeat, and use the hand to highlight these key syllables. And then we can record. I know this can be confusing. This symbolizes the time it takes to send this recording up to the cloud, and that's where our software evaluates it. And I got 100% because I'm kind of awesome today. <laughs> <laughs> so there I went. Um, I have 100%. I can compare the two voices, the model. I know this can be confusing. I know this can be confusing. Okay, and I, I hear a lot of similarity. Um, and then I move on to the next activity, or I can re record. Okay, you get up to three recordings per sentence. Um, let me go to the next one. Okay, so I apologize for the confusion. Um, I'm going to take on the idea of just a, a learner for a minute um, and I've spent a lot of time in Mexico and I, you know, I'm going to just sort of think like a learner for a minute. I might think this is, I apologize for the con, con, confusion, confusion. So we're going to go with a little bit of um, my idea of what it's going to sound like. I'll listen with my ears. I apologize for the confusion. But even if I listen, that's not going to correct what I might be perceiving. Right. Remember, Broca's area is getting in the way. So they listen. Um, we can scaffold ourselves with these images. Olive sock, apologize. And blue moon confusion. So that's going to help me. But when I go ahead and speak, I might say, I apologize for the confusion. Something like that. Again, it goes up to the cloud. And when it comes back, I have a 69%, which is just like a general notion of, you know, how, how close are you to being highly comprehensible? So it's, it's just about being understood. Um, it's, it's a benchmark concept. You can compare. I apologize for the confusion. I apologize for the confusion. Okay. And here. I'm using the wrong color vowel here. Red pepper. Instead of blue moon. So I, got, so I got some feedback on the vowel sound and I said something like confession, confession. And so it heard a uh, red pepper eh instead of blue moon ooh. Um, I can then listen to a video if I'm really confused about blue or if I want to learn more about how to make this sound. Um, this is a video that we have available in our YouTube channel, uh, Blue Canoes YouTube channel. Uh, but we make them really convenient and we integrate them into the lessons so that um, they're, they're really just in time for the concept that's being taught, okay? I then can listen. Blue moon confusion. I can see the stress pattern down below here, and I always have the bolded letter and underline that shows me where that blue sound happens. And with that in place, this is, I've lately been uh, d discovering, or sorry, describing this as moving into a new house when the moving van comes, you don't move your suitcases in first, right? You move in the big pieces of furniture. Uh, you gotta find out where the beds are gonna go and the dressers and the really big things um, first. And so stress is that biggest piece of furniture. It's the thing that has to get put in place to make the word functional. And after that, you can fine tune any other kinds of errors or problems that come up with individual sounds. Okay, so blue moon confusion, as long as we have that few in there, uh, the other pieces will fall into place enough for the time being. And then we can make those um, corrections in blue canoe, and we do, okay. Um, we can then go two more times, okay. 
I'm going to try one more to show you one third kind of, um, of feedback, and then we'll take some questions on what I've shown you so far. Okay, we'll move to our next sentence. There are a total of six sentences in each of these lessons, by the way, and we have well over, gosh, um, hundreds of sentences, hundreds of lessons, actually. So we have close to something like um, 600 sentences or more. Uh, we're always adding, okay? Um, so again, here's a sentence. These are simple sentences. Um, some of our sentences, most of our sentences are three lines long, uh, but this is a nice one. How does it sound? Please allow me to explain. Brown cow allow. Gray day explain. Please allow me to explain. Everyone try that with your hand. Please allow me to explain. Great. Let's go ahead and try it. Please allow me to explain. So we wait. And when we come back, hmm. Okay, so good. Sometimes, and this is the reality of, of voice recognition and machine learning, sometimes we just don't catch all of the errors. But we'd rather not catch an error than provide feedback on some error that doesn't exist. So in the world of this kind of technology, we're cautious and we move along. Um, no harm done, right? Um, so if you find this happening, it's just know that we're on the backside and we're always making improvements in the way that we listen to voice recognition. And it, it shouldn't be um, a bother so long as it's not giving false feedback. Uh, when you do find that happening, you can let us know, by the way. And that's kind of a good way to take a pause here and take questions from folks um, by way of saying, by the fact that you're here today, I am deputizing you <laughs> as what's called uh, a user and the best kind of user, not the kind who takes and takes, but a user who uses the app and actually stays in touch with us and tells us what you're experiencing. Um, if you know how to take screen captures, you can send us photos of what it is you're experiencing if something's odd. And I, I give you full permission to do that. Um, right within the app, when, like if I were playing alone, I would actually screen capture this and, and then I can share it with Penny, for example. And Penny loves to get email. Um, <laughs> inside of Blue Canoe, we actually give you direct access to all of us right here in the profile. And um, then you can get into profile and actually send us an email uh, right down below here and send us a picture of whatever it is you're noticing. Okay. Um, so questions and comments about the lessons so far. This is a, a lesson. We call it lessons and they're sentence based. And you can unmute yourself if you know what you want to ask, by the way. I'm going hey, to Karen, I wanted to mention one thing when on the screen, because of the light that was shining when you were, were sharing it, we couldn't see that certain words were highlighted. Oh. And I think that I just wanted to, to point that out to, to everybody on there. After one records and have errors, like on that first sentence when Karen had those errors, the words, the focus words that had the big errors all had a big white box around them. So um, knowing which of the words uh, I needed to work on, which were the words that had an error, that was what led me to tap those words and then bring up that second screen that Karen showed. It's just at least on my screen, I saw no white boxes around it just because okay. of the way the light was. Did anyone else see those white boxes or was it hidden for all of you too? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's hard to know what you didn't see, but um, but just to say, I think I'll add to that, Sarah, that we put a great deal of work into making sure that the visual interface really supports noticing and exploring what what each thing means, right? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for letting me know, too. I just turned off that light, so if we look at it some more, it'll okay. work. Um, Karen, Lorena is asking about, um, are the lessons mostly directed to beginners or not? So maybe you can focus a little bit on, on the level of, of learner that we're aiming for. That's right, good. So let me take us there for another moment then, see what we can do. There we go. Still a bit bright, so let me take that brightness down. That should be better. Oh, look at that, everybody, right? Let's see if we can see the feedback when we do this. This is, um, I'm going to go back and, and quit that lesson so you can see. Uh, here in our home page of the app, as you come down, you start to see the range of topics and lessons that we have available. And this really is the, 
the, the lion's share of that, that dig in kind of lesson that teachers can actually draw from as well. And we have a comprehensive spreadsheet of all of the sentences that are included in Blue Canoe. And if you don't find that exciting, I'll tell you why you should. <laughs> um, you can then feature sentences like that in your warmups of your online classes or your face-to-face -face classes. Um, you can create a mini chant out of one sentence that's in a particular lesson, okay? So as we come down, you'll find that students can, can browse and choose according to their interests, um, or you can decide we're going to focus in on academic language in the school section, for example, okay? Um, let's take a look at academic discussions just to get a sense of the leveling that we have. Um, if we have course registration, you start to see some longer sentences. And, and by the way, I'll just point out that short sentences like the ones we just saw might seem like beginner sentences, but remember that pronunciation doesn't, doesn't walk up that ladder hand in hand with uh, proficiency or vocabulary even necessarily. Um, that somebody can be an advanced uh, learner in terms of vocabulary or, you know, Lexus that they have in their mind, but they may not have any confidence to speak. So these smaller sentences are just as important to them as the longer sentences are, okay? Um, but with these long sentences, it's certainly more of a challenge to, to hit these three beats. Um, what we've done is taken a long sentence that someone might say, which course would you recommend for next semester? You know, and with accented English, that can start to sound very fast to the listener. And depending on the kinds of errors or slight differences that are being made, that may not be very comprehensible at all. So we break up, which course would you recommend for next semester to which course would you recommend for next semester? And that pacing all by itself, which is represented in the three lines you see here, allow the learner that time that the listener needs. To, to be a, a more cooperative listener and a more successful listener. Then we add in the three major focus words of those three phrases, because that's how English works. We have a, a phrase, we have a focus word, and then there is a key vowel in the stress syllable of that focus word, okay? So what are those three? We've got rose, red, red. Rose, red, red. Try that. Rose, red, red. One more time. Rose, red, red. Which course would you recommend next semester? Which course would you recommend next semester? You hear how I'm able to actually say that sentence pretty quickly, and yet it doesn't sound like it did when I just had to be a big, long, fast line? Yeah? So the phrasing is what we're teaching so that learners can create these little pauses and these moments of prominence. They can then listen. Roseboat course, red pepper recommend, red pepper semester. And they listen to the whole sentence. Which course would you recommend for next semester? You can have them use their hands with that, uh, just listening. Here we go. Which course would you recommend for next semester? Okay. And that's creating that noticing of the stress that otherwise is lost on their ears. So we make it kinesthetic. Okay. And then we can record. And you might say, um, which course do you recommend next semester? I'm just kind of making some little errors uh, to see, you know, let you see what people would see as their feedback. So we've got 44% as a kind of a general number. We can compare the learner's voice to the model. And then you can now see, let's see if I can get it a little better so that Sarah's point is well made. Ha ha. <laughs> now everybody's nodding. Okay, you can see it. So we highlight the words that have feedback coming their way. Um, I want to just mention that if I make um, a mistake over here in the word, I don't know, uh, would, maybe I say, would, would you, something like that. So long as I have important words, key words that have errors, I'm not going to get feedback on the other words until these bigger pieces of furniture are moved into that house, to use my metaphor again. So we fry the big fish. I'm full of the, the Friday afternoon metaphors. <laughs> we deal with the big problems first, and the big problems will occur in the most important words, and the rest will fall into place for now, okay? So what can we see with course? 
This is a rose boat. Oh, word. And we can go on to hear, if you read carefully, it says, I hear you using purple shirt. We vary the audio feedback. So sometimes you'll hear it say, I heard you use purple shirt. Um, and sometimes it's just, uh, this is a rose boat word. But the feedback is always here visually. Okay. You can listen. Rose boat course. Okay. And then down below, we have a list of words. And if you've studied with us, you know that we've created a, a musical noticing technique called flooding where it's helpful to hear a list of words that also have that sound. So coach, promote, no, close, toe, rose, boat, oh. All of these have the same sound and helps us prime for course, right? So here we are on the chart, course, a nice R controlled vowel, okay? What else is here? Um, we can go into the word semester and see what happened You're not there. Using enough stress. Use your open hand and spend more time on the underlined sound. So I think I said something like semester, um, semester, and needed to hear semester. Try that with me. Red, pepper, semester, right? Um, so now we know that needs to be fixed. We can listen again. We can record again. But before we record again, we might also notice the extras. And let's just look at that. Okay. So these are two avatars uh, that are representative of what Siri and Alexa hear. That's kind of the easiest way I can put it. Um, if you ask your learners how successful they feel doing voice to text with their phone, they probably feel a lot less successful than we do. And I tell you, I don't feel that successful when I do voice to text. Um, I don't know about you, but I often get sort of surprising results when I talk to the phone and try to have it write a text for me. So this, we're actually harnessing um, an, a separate set of, let's call it software, that is listening in the very same way that Siri listens. It's very honest feedback. We're not contriving it. Uh, we haven't prepared this window for anybody. This is a live transcript, okay? Uh, so it heard, uh, did you say, which curse do you recommend next semester? And this one heard, I heard you say, which course do you recommend next semester? So it kind of gives the learner a sense of, out of two people listening to me, one would hear this and one would hear that. And that's kind of, I think it's a pretty neat feature, okay? Um, sometimes you'll see, wow, I, now I know why people misunderstand me uh, when you see what's written there, okay? Um, Karen, I'm gonna jump in for just a moment if that's okay. Right? Sure. One of the things I, I wanna actually explain is that the, um, the entire process in that extras of what is, who is evaluating the speaker is completely different from in the lesson. Mm -hmm. In the lesson, it is our proprietary speech recognition engine that is evaluating it. And that speech recognition engine is completely trained to look for color vowel informed issues. Uh, the big furniture, it's looking for stress. It's listening for vowel sounds. Um, it's listening for all of that. It is not pre, it's not trying to guess. In the extras, and the reason why it's in extras is just for fun. We're really actually using commercial speech recognition engines that are trying to guess what somebody said. Mm -hmm. And the more our sentence is a typical sentence that somebody would say, the more you'll find that your students actually can make several really big errors and the extras would still completely understand them because it's trying to, just like Siri, it's trying to give you the benefit of the doubt and guess what you've said. And so there will not always be a perfect match between what is in extras and what is in our pronunciation because somebody might guess what you're trying to say, but that doesn't mean that you said it correctly. Um, but it still sometimes is, is an interesting thing to look at. Mm -hmm. All right, there. Thanks. No, and sometimes it goes the opposite direction too, where you might not get the feedback here that you get here. So it really is kind of multiple ways to access interesting information. Um, and we found that users find that wonderfully compelling because it's not just uh, telling you what to think, but rather to take in these, these different pieces. Okay. Any questions so far? Now what we'll do is um, I will here we go, we'll quit our lesson. We generally don't wanna quit a lesson um, because the goal is there's a, there's a minimum goal of about 10 to 15 minutes per day of practice and that involves completing a lesson, 
or completing a game of color it out. But the idea of completion is important. And if I quit this lesson now, I won't get my full credit for completing that lesson. Um, so in general, I, I recommend finishing um, or telling your students that they should finish that lesson. Even, you know, if someone's knocking at the door and you say, can you just wait a minute? I'll be right out. Finish my lesson. It takes another two minutes. Uh, so that's a good idea to not, not quit like I just did. Okay. Um, great. And so we've, we've kind of done a good job of sort of diving into these sentences as one of our features. Um, we have two games. One is a quiet game. Uh, sorted out is for noisy places, so you don't have to speak in order to make it work, and you don't have to listen. Um, so if, you know, your students are in a, uh, this is sort of pre-coronavirus, but, it, you know, they'd ride on a bus or they'd be on the subway, um, maybe a place without a lot of internet, and they can still play sorted out because it's right there on their phone at all times. Um, so that's a pretty easy, fun game to play. Um, and yet it's kind of complex. It's going to draw on their internal pronunciation and they'll start to reveal to themselves which words they've maybe been mispronouncing for a long time. Um, we always start off with round one and we'll just do you know, a little bit of a game so you get a sense of the fun, um, the compelling aspect of it. Words fall and we're going to categorize them by one vowel sound or the other. So we have green T E and gray day A and you're saying, Karen, don't let it fall. <laughs> and I'll move it over there. Okay. If I make a mistake, um, I'll get the, the scary thunder sound. And then I can continue. Oh no, and, okay, and so forth. I can pause it if I get really stressed out. Don't worry, you know, you can drink your coffee, come back to it. <laughs> um, but then we can continue playing. Okay, and I finish up. And as we finish up each round, there are 16 words in that round. There we go. You get the sad music if you miss more than three. So I got the sad music. And I will play this level again with new color vowels. But it does take, I, I recommend for you, you know, for all of us teachers, help your learners take full advantage of what we provide because we all know we tend to, you know, I'm just going to click on the next thing and start over. But there's actually feedback right here, right? So you can review what words you missed. Take out your color vowel organizer, which is, you know, the um, standard way of organizing words in the color vowel approach. Have them write down the words they missed. So I, I just want to kind of put that piece out there that learner training is just as important with a highly sophisticated app as it is in every kind of situation. You know, how do you want your learners to engage in this activity? Uh, we want them to write these words down in this case. We want them to use their open hand when they're playing color it out or doing the sentences. So your role with this app is, is central. And I think that's part of what makes this app so different from any other app is that it's actually connected and relies on you too. Um, we, we have some standalone activities or instruction that allow learners to gain access to this information as well. But I just think about you all the time and how, what an essential piece you can uh, provide to this learner's puzzle in, in making the best use. Okay. Um, so that's just a little bit of sorted out. And then um, our other main activity is, of course, color it out. And it's kind of a nice way to finish up the demo. Uh, see if we can get a little focus there. Good. Um, when we play a new game, the computer receives cards. You receive cards. You go first. I'll go first. Uh, there's, a, there's a deck to draw from, and then there's a discard pile. I can hit my sort button, look at my cards, and I can shuffle around manually. Okay, I have a lot of mustard words today. That's exciting. <laughs> so I can take uh, something like this okay. one. And at this point, learner typically says, well, what do I do now? And so help me say my turn is here to help them move forward, but it's also here to help them spend time on this page because there's a lot to pull out and gain. They can listen. A cup of mustard number. A cup of mustard does. Okay. Uh, this is the pattern. It goes from left to right. We start with the color, the image, and the word. 
the color, the image, and the word. So everyone try a cup of mustard number. A cup of mustard does. A cup of mustard number. A cup of mustard what? Does. So the sixth word, by the time you get to that sixth beat, we have seen how the brain is getting used to ba ba a a a a a a a. So even if you want to say does, there's a chance that you're going to be primed, and this learner can actually self-correct in advance of making an error to say does. And if they do say does, we're ready to catch them on the other end and help them notice that. Um, in the handheld game, we find this. Uh, instead of machine learning and voice recognition, we've got the humans that are close by, or even the student's own brain will notice. I just said dos or dos, um, and yet all those other sounds were ah, uh, a cup of mustard number, a cup of mustard does. Um, this is a patented uh, process, by the way. We just received a patent for this last year. It was very exciting. Um, this hasn't been done before, and it's precisely the process of having a left to right scanning sequence and priming the brain with these sounds for success, okay? But that said, learner still has their own idea of how this word is said. Why? Because a lot of learners deeply assume that the way something is spelled is how it should sound, right? So in the case of this word, I might say, a cup of mustard number, a cup of mustard dose. Or in the case of somebody I met recently, do's. Right, he really. This is a, a cup of mustard, a uh, word. Okay, so we start with very simple feedback. This is a cup of mustard word. And then learner can try again. A cup of mustard number, a cup of mustard do's. And we come back with. Okay, so the green mark that you Two see. More for me. I'll explain. Olive sock shop. Olive sock dollars. Good. Um, we had quite a bit of discussion around how many turns does a learner take in Color It Out uh, before we've interrupted the game completely. So when the check mark happens again, it's that sort of no harm done. Uh, they don't get feedback on the fact that they said deuce, but on the other hand, the game continues to play. Um, and we'll come back and get it another time. So we really aim to strike a balance between the flow of play and catching every error to the point where it's no longer fun, okay? Um, so as the learner goes along, you're trying to play all of your cards before the computer runs out of cards. We've added uh, some strategic cards that come up in um, the, the higher levels as new cards are released. Uh, the first 200 cards, I, Jen, let's see, um, Sarah, maybe you can confirm. I don't think we have a lot of uh, skip cards or other kind of strategic cards in the early set. Is that right? Um, in, in actually the, the early set, we have some. We have enough to make it a game. Um, in some of the more advanced sets, we actually don't have as many. Okay, that's right. So um, certain sets of words will release with the more time that you play the game. Okay, and, and you'll see that um, longer words, uh, academic words, and so forth in the full version are released. Okay. The free version maintains these top 200 core words that are, that are also featured in our card game. Okay. So I'll pause out of that. I'll go back to my main menu. Also a good idea to always finish the card game. Okay. Uh, beyond that, we have a, the, the last feature I'd really like to be sure you walk away knowing about today that I, I love deeply is the Color Valid Dictionary. Um, the dictionary is built through what we call an API or a feeder kind of programming from the Oxford Online Dictionary, which means that we don't sit over at Blue Canoe trying to enter as many words as we can from the English language. Um, that should make everybody happy because <laughs> we can use our time more effectively. And it also means that there's just a vast number of words available for you to look up. So if I look up uh, apology, that was a word that came up earlier. There's apology. And I can also see the other word forms, by the way, that come up with similar beginnings, right? So there's apology, apologize, and so forth, apologetic. So I could start with apology. And suddenly I have this very simple way of knowing how 
do I say this word? Again, with the prioritization on the stress location and the color vowel at that moment of stress, which is you know, so much simpler and kind of a quicker way through the question than I'm gonna dig through this phonetic script and figure out how to render this word, which often doesn't work for learners. So they can uh, listen. Olive sock. Ah, oh, apology. Apology. Okay. Now, if this were a dictionary like so many that have a little audio feature, uh, it's easy to say, well, that, that's not that different. I mean, I can listen to words over in the Webster online dictionary. But I've noticed that if you prime, if you go from left to right, Olive sock. Ah. Oh. Apology. Learner can notice that ah, that olive sound, even in this voice over here. Try that again and just take out your hand and you'll be able to notice it even more. Olive sock. Ah. Apology. 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 So you can do a little bit of mini flooding there, you know, without annoying uh, your loved ones in your house. <laughs> Apology. Apology. But you'll start to notice that stressed syllable more through its pitch. And in some of the um, in some of the recordings, even through the time that's needed. Okay, um, so you can look up any word you want. Uh, we can go back down to apologetic and start noticing that the stress will shift depending on the word form. So same basic meaning, but this is now an adjective, and now this is a red word. And you can say, "Oh, I didn't know that." Apologetic. 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 Okay, so the learner is now aware of something they may not have actually noticed before about how different word forms play with each other. Okay, so that's uh, the dictionary is available in the full version, which would be the individual uh, upgraded version or the educator's version. Uh, it is not a part of the free app, and it's something I, I highly recommend. I think it's just really powerful. So we've, what we've done is we've gone through, and you might have noticed here, up along the top, we've got the days of the week. And the goal is to have a green filled dot for every day of the week so far. Um, so when you complete your 10 minutes per day, you'll receive, um, halfway through that time, you'll receive a, sort of a cheering on, you're halfway to your goal. And then there will be a second one that says, you achieved your goal. Um, and it's just a little bit like going to the gym. You know, you, you don't want to go to the gym just once a week or once a month uh, for a couple of hours. It's better to go short periods of time more consistently. And so that's what we aim to, to educate our users to do as well, is about 10 minutes, maybe 15 per day as a minimum, and, and then move along. And they'll be using these strategies or incorporating them into their awareness of their spontaneous speech. You know, I, I would like to see them talking a little bit like this because they're used to using their hands so much um, that they start to spend time on those stressed vowels. That's what most speakers are lacking um, as the first piece of furniture, as they just aren't aware that that's so central to spoken English and being understood, okay? Um, let's take this time to go to the group. And I know we've got a lot of teachers in the room who use Blue Canoe with their students. Um, do we have any, can anybody share any examples where, where students have really felt like this is something new for them or that you felt that it's new? And tell us a little bit about that. Everyone's Nobody's like, talking. So. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hi. My students love this app. They use it all the time. Um, I kind of started it midway through the semester because I started taking the uh, color vowel level one class in January and we got them all set up. Penny helped us get us all set up. I think the first of March or it may have even been sooner, maybe the middle of February, but they love it. Um, they use it all the time. They tell me that they're using it instead of doing other things that they should be doing. They like it so much. <laughs> So, and they do find ways, they find all the little pockets of information much faster than if I am looking for information, I ask them because they, through their mm, ineffective way of speaking sometimes, they're able to find all those little pockets of jewel information inside the app that it's hard for native speakers to find. So yeah, wow. they love, so they particularly love the dictionary. It's their favorite dictionary to have. Yeah. No, we love the dictionary. Great. Is anyone using it 
is using uh, Blue Canoe in class, during class. Is that happening with anyone? There are lots of great ways to use it. I'm planning to dedicate a whole Friday at five to a couple of, of well, several tips for incorporating uh, Blue Canoe as a resource tool uh, right there during class, and then it's the practice tool outside of class. But I'd love to hear from anyone who is, okay? Well, I tutor, but um, the dictionary is great because the, um, the app is telling them if they're speaking correctly and not me. And so it's, it's terrific because it totally takes it away from me that I'm not correcting them here and there. Oh, let's see what the dictionary has to say. And then they listen. Oh, so this is an authority that's more important than me, I think, you know, or more objective in their eyes. Oh, I guess I need to change this. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a common question um, that comes up, which is, you know, how are you supposed to sound or what's the right way? And if you've used the dictionary, you'll know that sometimes you'll get two different results on a word. And just like uh, many good dictionaries, you know, they, it recognizes that some words are said in multiple ways. There are lots of right ways to speak. And so you'll, you'll see that sometimes and, and quite often with words that have variability. Uh, for example, you know, we could take uh, the dictionary once again here and um, we just look at say a word like uh, aunt you know it's a really classic you know, like your uncle and your aunt you can already tell how I say it but here's my uncle and my aunt so we've got black black cat ah. aunt olive sock ah aunt okay so we have both varieties of aunt and aunt and as my co-author Shirley uh, has a great you know, story that on one side of her family from one part of the country, she's got her you know, Aunt Lily, and then on the other side, she's got Aunt Rita. So you know, we, it's not just that I prefer this and she prefers that, but we actually use these words in variation for lots of reasons, okay? Um, so we do have some pretty sophisticated ways of visiting variation and accent. That's fun. And oh, Karen, why, don't you, why don't you show the videos? I, we got a really nice comment from a teacher the other day that said that now that she's doing distance learning, she uses your videos as part of class all the time. And, and maybe everybody else would like to see why she does that. All right, great. Yeah, I, I think it's an easy thing for me to overlook. So thanks for pointing it out. Uh, we've put a lot of good time into making a set of videos and we continue adding to learner videos they're located here in the app. Uh, and, and so you can see that we've got an introduction. I like this because it doesn't just fall on the teacher then to say, we're going to use our hand in this completely new way and I want you to believe me. Um, now, in the level one course that Lynn was mentioning, uh, where I train teachers in the basics of color vowel approach, um, I, you know, again, I deputize you to be a strong leader with your students and, and explain to them and have them do it. Um, but it's nice to be able to go to a video that kind of externalizes and says, you know, here's another person showing you why. Um, so as an example, um, the intro to color vowel here is something like this. Hi, this is Karen here for a color vowel minute. English has 14 essential vowel sounds and being able to hear and say each one is one of the most important parts of speaking English clearly. This is challenging for most non-native English speakers, especially since English has only five vowel letters. So this is one that introduces color vowels. Um, I, some of them are live action where we've filmed them. Hi, this is Karen, here for a color vowel minute. We already know that listen and repeat isn't an effective strategy for improving pronunciation. If it were, we'd all be able to speak foreign languages. The color vowel system is here to help, but it's not just something you see, it's something you do. The open hand is a physical cue that trains your brain to succeed with stress. I'll show you how- So we keep them short. Uh, there's a little bit of a lag with my camera showing you, uh, so it kind of looks, you know, um, like it's from a distance, but it's, it's really um, a great way to get students onboarded with, this is a way of learning, uh, this is systematic, and if they learn these strategies, they can make a great deal of progress. Okay. Um, we 
include a number of sort of about English videos, about stress, about words changing color, like aunt and aunt. But then our second set, uh, or this additional set, is one video per color vowel through our vowel yoga series. So this is another brain-based way to approach the question of what if I can't hear the difference between um, a ah and ah, because my first language doesn't have those two sounds. If I come from Spanish, I only have ah, and it sounds like both of them at the same time. So we actually use the body to explore the, the different position in the jaw and the tongue and the lips between these two sounds, and then even the difference between those and uh, which is another sound that many languages don't have, and simply skip altogether, um, moving around from one of their vowels to another. Um, so we take this kind of, it's a little bit of an out of the box approach, but how well does pronunciation instruction work when we just listen and repeat? And you can remind students of that question and you know, say you've been studying English for years of listening and repeating, but we, need, we have work to do. And this work can only in this last mile be done through these other parts of the brain. So we always come back to that with learners. And I, I think they really understand that when it's presented that clearly. Okay, great. What, uh, can I hear from anyone else who has a favorite app? because I see Chelsea's in the room and Doug and some others who I know are using Blue Canoe. Uh, Chelsea, what's your favorite with your students? So right now um, I'm teaching the VIP kids students and I'm in the development of um, designing the courses for university. So I haven't had a chance to use it live yet. But I'm also um, a former student of mine from Egypt. I'm Skyping with her tomorrow, and I'm going to start using it with her. So still in the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, well, especially at this time. So know that, you know, if you're an, if you're an educator, and we'll kind of use this by way of wrapping up, by the way, um, if you're an educator, we still have our offer of a free full version for you and your learners through June 30th. So if, you know, this would be the way for you to go is to contact us at Blue Canoe. Uh, I think uh, we have a couple of links that have gone on in the chat of how to apply for that. Um, and then your learners and you have that through June 30th. And in some cases with certain kinds of nonprofit situations in schools with, you say, uh, volunteer based schools or uh, nonprofit organizations, we have grants available that could extend your time with that full version with your students. And that full version has a robust dashboard where you can view your students' use. Um, that's pretty exciting stuff. So you, it means you can assign homework and then check that they're actually doing their homework um, or what is it that they're doing in the app and which, which activities are they playing most or where are they spending their time. Um, that's something that's uniquely available in that educator's version. And, and so I recommend for each of you that that's the route you go for, for your own phone personally, and then for your learners, at least during this really special time. Um, right. so, beyond so that, that, yeah, let, go ahead. Let me, let me jump in and, and make it really clear to everybody, um, you know, what to do if you're excited about this and you haven't been working with us yet, right? So Blue Canoe um, wants to work with every teacher. So if you are a teacher and you don't have Blue Canoe yet, and you want to have a full version that you're going to evaluate uh, for yourself, right? You probably want to evaluate it before you recommend it to any of your students or use it with your students. Um, just write to us um, and ask and we and say, um, I would like to have a, a complimentary teacher's version, right? And if you go on our website, you will find a form that you can fill out that asks for that. On the, There's a, a, a link at the top that is for um, schools and organizations, or if you go all the way down to the footer, there is a contact us form. And in that contact us form, use the one for educators. And we are happy to give you, you just say, I'm a teacher and I want to evaluate it for my students. Boom, we'll give you a, a free version to evaluate, okay? Then, after you've evaluated it, and we hope that you fall in love with it, then you need to think about, okay, how do I want to use it? How do I want to refer it to folks? And if you are running a group in some way, whether it is a classroom um, or you have individual private 
clients, but it's a group and you want to be able to have a dashboard that manages them, then you're interested in our group version or our educator version um, because that's the one that has the dashboard. Okay, for that one, um, we won because of COVID. We've been super generous. And if you are a classroom in a middle school or a high school or a university or you're a nonprofit, we are so happy to give it to you for free until June 30th. Um, if you are not, uh, you know, come to us and we'll figure out something for you. And then after June 30th, we hope that you know, there's a way for us to work together. Maybe your university could buy it, lots of different ways, okay? If you want to just recommend it to people who are not studying with you and you don't need to have a dashboard to follow them, then send them to the website. Send them to our individual version. They can download it themselves. They can have the free version forever if they want. And at their option, individuals can upgrade to the full version. But just know once somebody goes down the path of the individual path, they're not part of a group. They're not part of your dashboard, right? They're, they're on the individual path. If you want something for us that is your free educator version, or you wanna talk with us about the free classroom version, or you want to talk about us about working together for your group, you need to contact us because the group um, purchase and the group access is not through the app stores, right? That, that only works for individuals. I hope that's about as clear as mud. <laughs> Our life got a lot more complicated uh, when, you know, yesterday when we released our, our app in the app store and now we have this individual version. Um, so on the downside, it got more complicated, but on the positive side, we're so excited because we had been asked by so many people, I don't have a teacher. How can I get access to it? I, I just want to do it on my own. I don't have a teacher. And now we, we've, we've made that available. Um, Sarah, I think we can show, we do have this little table that kind of quickly clarifies. Do we feel like we can give people sure. a glimpse of that? Um, this is a working document that we'll be putting on our website uh, within, you know, very, like within minutes after this webinar. Um, but the blue column is what we've had uh, evolving over the past four years. And yesterday opened the two green columns, if you just kind of get a sense of how much we've expanded. And, um, and so you'll see here at the top that concept of individual access versus group access. And the groups would be educators like you and organizations, including um, you know, businesses and governments and whoever. Um, we currently have, it's so exciting, we have the whole city of Kobe, Japan using Blue Canoe, where the mayor made it available to the residents. That kind of thing is happening. So that's a group example um, where all of the features and the dashboard are available. And then there's that individual access. Okay, so you kind of get a sense of everything we've been mentioning today about the free versus the upgraded premium version for the individual. And that, that key difference here is the teacher's dashboard on this level, that if you want to see what they're doing from your teacher perspective, it, it needs to be the group access version because that's how that's designed. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. I, I wanted to say a special uh, extra, again, welcome to those of you who are new to what we do on Fridays and maybe new to Color Vowel. If you're interested in learning more about Color Vowel and how we teach in this revolutionary way, I've just posted a link to our events page. And next week I have two free webinars, Introduction to Teaching English as a Second Language with the Color Vowel Chart. And I hope you'll join me um, for that. We do offer uh, discounted promotional codes there so that you can participate in our level one courses. Raise your hand if you've been in a level one course with me. We've got you know, quite a few people. Um, they still come back <laughs> and they can speak to, to what is done for them in their teaching. Um, if you go to our Facebook page and ask, we're happy to answer those questions too, okay? Uh, so thanks again. Thanks for uh, taking a Friday time to be with us. And, and thanks also to Sarah and Penny and others for joining us today. Okay. Have a good one. I'll post this. Thanks, recording, everybody. Okay. And so share it with your friends. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. Good to see you, Doug. Bye, Julia. Hi, Susan. Good to see you. Bye, Jessica. Bye-bye. Bye, Marianne. Thank you.
Good to see you, Lorena, Silvia. All right, take care. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Karen.